I'm going to ask you, playing football in, in India, uh, Ricky played there, of course, at Dempo as well. W what is the, the football culture like in India? I'll Mad let you start, Humi. <laughs> <laughs> this could go on for a while. Madness. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Um, <laughs> everyone thinks about India, they think cricket. But you've been to the wrong places. You go to the southern states or you go to your, your coastal states with uh, Goa, Kerala, you go around to Calcutta on the east coast, they're insane. People don't quite understand, and I was explaining to you before, they've got, this, I think it's the second oldest football rivalry in, in world football with uh, the Kolkata Derby, Mohamed Ghan, East Bengal. Oof. And they get 100, 120,000 every game. Packed. Uh, wow. And people don't know about it. Wow. Ricky, I mean, you played there, of course, like I mentioned. You've played in, in many countries around the world. Where would you put India as far as that, that feverish football culture? It would be, it'd be right up there. Um, South America's crazy, um, obviously England. Um, but I, I would say that the, in India, it's even much crazier than, than here in North America, by far. Like, um, and now that they've got the, um, a bit more of a better infrastructure and they've brought in players for the ISL where Humi played, um, that's where things have really kind of got the, the, the adulation from, from outside. Um, but I still think they need a lot more exposure because there's good players there. Mm -hmm. There's some good Indian players there, but they just need the exposure. Yes, yeah, good point. Do, do you need that breakthrough player to, to perhaps move from India to uh, a big European league? Even MLS to really get that, that next step? Yeah, and they've, they've got one of the most unknown world powers in, in a single player in Sunil Chetri. People don't know about him. He's, I think he's the active international third highest goal scorer in the world. I think he's, he's, he's scored 75, 80 goals for, for India, and people don't know about him. Mm -hmm. he, he, he tried to come over, but like you said, um, they had one player, a uh, goalkeeper, played in the Europa League, and it was huge in India. Um, he played for Steibach. in Norway, the goalkeeper, um, but they do. They've got a couple young gems who I think, and having played with them and worked with them, I think they've got the opportunity, but in the future, especially after hosting the Under-17 World Cup, a few people are getting noticed and they're realizing that this is a, an unearthed gem. And I think if they get the, the clubs and from Europe, from around the world, coming in to watch them and getting involved in partnerships in that, I think there will be, in the next, I'd say, five, 10 years, you'll probably see Good, good few Indian players playing in Europe. Well, what, what, what was your um, take on the style? Like, how did it affect your style? Because I remember when I went there as playing as a central midfield player who wants to get on the ball and pass. And even though there's some talent there, the culture, the footballing culture, they're not as quick as what, what how it is in England. How did that affect your style? It's got better. Like, I, honestly, from the first ISL that I went out there to now, it's a million miles apart because they brought in the, the foreign coaches, the more, mainly Spanish, English, uh, German, they have brought in coaches who are going to change the style of play out there. And the only thing that they were really lacking over the last couple of years was the, the tactic side of things. Physically, they're as good as anybody. Mm. Technically, as good as anybody. Tactically, they struggle a bit.